and we strengthen up, iron sharpens iron, we grab more fishing supplies and get right back out that door to go live another six days spreading the gospel, okay? That's what we're here for. And with all this denomination crap, I'm not saying they're bad people. Don't leave here and think I'm saying that. What I'm saying is they were indoctrinated as children before they could even speak and they've been shoved that turd sandwich their entire life. That's why it looks like we're the oddballs. When I had somebody high up at a big church say, man, heavy metal church is more like the church in Acts than most of these churches are, including ours. You know, the one that he went to. You know, I mean, that makes me, I give God all the credit for that. But that's saying something, you know? And this is who we are, and we're not changing. We're not changing. So if you look at it all, here we go, the Reader's Digest version. If you look at it all, we had God and the Jews, then Jesus comes down and the law is fulfilled and Christianity is here. 70 or so years after Jesus ascends into heaven, the true church goes underground and the Catholic church manipulates doctrine to mirror Hellenism and the worship of the Greek gods so that they could stay in Rome, thus becoming the first organized church of a very watered down Christian doctrine. Catholicism lacks the most important pieces of the Christian pie, not salvation. They believe Jesus is the, you know, all of that. But they lack the most important pieces of the Christian pie and fills the void with tons and tons of ritual practices that are nowhere to be found in the Christian Bible. Cathedrals lined with gold and silver and they dress all funky donkey and, and all that kind of stuff. Not scriptural, okay? Then around 1,517 years later, 1,517 years later, on October 31st, 1517, Martin Luther grew a set of balls and called the Catholic Overlord Church out by nailing his 95 Thesis to the church door. The 95 Thesis basically called out all of the Catholic BS. What was the 95 Thesis mainly about? His 95 Thesis, which propounded two central beliefs. Now listen, and this is a no-brainer. I can't believe it took 1,517 years for somebody to nail this to the Catholic church wall. It, it, two central beliefs, that the Bible is the central religious authority and that humans may reach salvation only by their faith and not by their deeds. Who would have thought it took 1,517 years for somebody to get that out of the Bible and throw it in the Catholic's face? Tell me Satan ain't real. Tell me he's not a military genius, the author of confusion and division, okay? I'm gonna get some hate mail today, but I don't care. That's what sparked and, uh, the Protestant Rev Revolution, the Protestant Reformation. His writings changed the course of religious and cultural history in the West. In his thesis, Luther condemned the excesses and corruption of the Roman Catholic Church especially the papal, pra, the papal, pra, papal, <laughs> I'm a people. Especially the papal practices of asking payment called indulgences, indulgences for the forgiveness of sins. If, if Uncle Bob died without being saved, it says right there in Hezekiah 532 that you can give the Catholic Church $20,000 and they'll pray him out of hell. Right? Right? Yeah. And, uh, and I know somebody in modern day times whose baby died uh, before leaving the hospital. And the, they had priests tell them that their kid went to hell because the child was not baptized in the Catholic Church. But they could pay $15,000. Yeah. That's satanic. I'm not saying Catholics are satanic. I'm saying the hierarchy of Catholicism. Okay? Take it, I don't care. How did people react to Luther's thir uh, 95 Thesis? The church responded by labeling Luther a heretic, forbidding the reading or publication of his 95 Thesis, so the Catholics tried to shut him up, and threatening Luther with excommunication. Ooh. Luther refused to recant his beliefs. When Luther once again refused to recant his position, the Holy Roman Emperor Charles V ordered his arrest and then boom the denominations began coming 
in the early 1600s. So basically, all of you that came from a different denomination, you know, you did, some of you got saved at Heavy Metal Church, so this is what you know. But for a lot of you, basically, all of, the, all of you came from a different denomination and is nothing more than a residual belief of early Christianity based on the translation of your denomination's founder somewhere between the 1600s to the 1900s. Agreed? Let me read it again. So basically, all of you that came from a different denomination is nothing more than a residual belief of early Christianity based on the translation of your denomination's founder somewhere between the 1600s to the 1900s. This has created numerous doctrinal differences that have divided the body of Christ, okay? So what does the FHMCC believe? Time. All right. I'm just reading scripture now. What does the FHMCC believe? We focus on the concrete fundamental beliefs of Christianity that all of the mainstream denominations will agree with, okay? So that should comfort you right there. In other words, what does it take to get to heaven? Not the stupid rules, okay? I'm talking salvation by faith alone in Christ alone. I'm talking that Jesus is the only way to God. Jesus is God in human form, part of the Trinity, three separate, all one. One must repent and try to turn from sin. Okay, we've been accused of the party church. Yeah, you can just keep on doing whatever the hell you want. <laughs> no, you got to change eventually. And if you're, at astral, if you're seeking God, he's going to seek you and, and change you. You can't do it yourself, you know. And some of you are on the Forrest Gump plan. Some of you are on the Einstein plan. But that's your plan with you and God. And we're going to love you whether you're Forrest Gump or Einstein. And we're all in this together, okay? Uh, one must repent. Okay, boom. Uh, confess. Oh, that Jesus Christ is Lord. Believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. Ask forgiveness of your sins. Repent. Try to turn. You will fail. You will fall down on your face numerous times. But God is true and just to forgive a repentant heart, and he will forgive you. And you don't jump in and out of salvation. Oh, I screwed up. I'm not saved. Father, please forgive me for all of my sins. I am saved. Oh, oh, I just screwed up. Oh, I'm not saved. Oh, I... That's stupid. Okay? It's once for all. Okay, so Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Teach it. This is it. You want to know what rules to follow? If you can master these two rules that I'm going to say right now, if all you do, forget what the rep, forget everything. If you can focus the rest of your life on giving your heart, body, soul, and mind to these two rules, you're going to get it right. Okay? Check it out. Matthew 22, 36 through 40. Teacher, which is the most important commandment in the law of Moses? Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your soul, and all of your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. Are you doing that? Listen. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Okay? If you follow these two, all the others will automatically fall in place. Well, how do you say that, Brian? Because if I'm loving my neighbor like I love myself, I'm not going to try to steal his wife from him. I'm not going to try to steal his lawnmower when he's not there. I'm not going to this, 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 this. If I love people like I try to love you like I love myself, I'm not going to screw you over ever, ever. See how easy that is? The fact is all church people fail it. The two most important rules that we're supposed to be following, all these numb nuts out there, they're telling us you got, can't wear shorts and all this kind of, they're failing at those. They're failing at those. They are not loving their fellow man to Christ. They're condemning them like those street preachers over at the Pride Fest and all these other things. They're, they're spewing hate. That's not loving others like you love yourself. That's not spreading the love of Christ. You see what I'm saying? Hello? And are you really loving God with all of your heart, soul, body, and mind? Does he control your money? Does he control your aspirations, your desires, your goals? I mean, do you spend more time with God than you do Facebook? You know what I'm saying? That, those are honest questions. Do you pray between commercials when your favorite show's on? That's not giving God your best. 
Love is the greatest. We get, we get our shirts get pounded all of the time. I'm a common man. So when I say don't be a dick, tell me if this doesn't sound like that. If I could speak all the languages of earth and of angels but didn't love others, I would only be a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. If I had the gift of prophecy and if I understood all of God's secret plans and possessed all knowledge, and if I had such faith that I could move mountains but didn't love others, I would be nothing. If I gave everything I had to the poor and even sacrificed my body, I could boast about it. But if I didn't love others, in other words, if I didn't love others and treat them like I love myself, I would have gained nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It, it does not demand its own way. It is not irritable. And it keeps no record of being wronged. How many Christians screw that one up all the time? Every single church in the world screws that up all the time, day in, day out. I've screwed it up. You screwed it up. Don't tell me otherwise because you're a friggin' liar. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up, never loses faith. It always, it's, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. Prophecy and speaking in unknown languages and special knowledge will become useless, Pentecostals, but love will last forever. Now our knowledge is partial and incomplete, and even the gift of prophecy reveals only part of the whole picture. But when the, I only said Pentecostals because they, the tongue. Never mind. But when the time of perfection comes, these partial things will become useless. When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childless things. Now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror. But then we see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is partial and incomplete. But then I will know everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Three things, church will last forever. Faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. And you, that's a lot of words to say, so don't be a dick. 1 Corinthians 13. All right, here's the deal. I'm telling you, we're really finished, but I got it. This is one of the most important things right here. Amen. Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. I, I get this all of the time. I really need you to wake up and listen to me, okay? Every time I come up with a new shirt, even the crew, every, you know, I'm, I'm too vulgar, I'm too this, my shirt's blah, blah, blah. <clears throat> it's to gain, it's, a, it's to attract the attention of lost people. You're not gonna do that with God is awesome, you know what I'm saying? And they work, but here's the, what? I didn't hear you. Okay, my bad. Oh, you're the one that's not living with that other person, right? Okay, so. I'm kidding. Um, so here's the deal. I always get, well, unwholesome talk. They always throw this Ephesian scripture at me. Well, no unwholesome talk is supposed to come out of your mouth. <laughs> yeah, you're going to hell. You're breaking that one. Let's read the whole damn thing. You ready? Ephesians 4, 17 through 32. Instructions for Christian living. So I tell you this and insist on it in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do in the futility of their thinking. They are darkened in their understanding and separated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them due to the hardening of their hearts. Having lost all sensitivity, they have given themselves over to sensuality, so to as indulge in every kind of impurity, and they are full of greed. That, however, is not the way of life you learned when you heard about Christ and were taught in him in accordance with the truth that is in Jesus. You were taught with regard to your former way of life to put off your old self, which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires, to be made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We're getting to a point. Therefore, each of you must put off a falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. Christians fell at that all the time, every week. Every single church is nothing but a gossip station a slander station, okay? Even this one, I'm sure there's people in here talking smack before and after service. Um, here we go. So, uh, just bear with me. Therefore, each of you must put off falsehood and speak truthfully to your neighbor. Most people don't have the man jewels to go up and tell somebody 
when they've been hurt, they've been wronged, they would rather go tell somebody else about it and talk smack like that. When the, this is all, all these Christians that come at us break this one all the time. For we are all members of one body. In your anger, do not sin. They all screw that one up, don't you? Sometimes, right? Yeah, I do. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. That means that your husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, child, best friend, whatever. How many of you jacked that one up? So did all these other people that accuse, uh, well, no unwholesome talk. And do not grieve the devil or don't give the devil a foothold. Anyone who has been stealing must steal no longer, but must work doing something useful with their own hands that they may have something to share with those in need. I'll tell you what, it's pretty sad when waitresses don't like Sundays because that's the church crowd that expect the most, complain the most, and tip the least. Hello, are you there? Isn't there a problem with that? That's why, what do we teach here? No matter if she or he is a douche, your food is wrong, it is not her or his fault. No matter if they are mean to you, because they may have got beat at home, abused, might have just lost a child, you don't know what they're going through. No matter what kind of crappy service you get, tip them 20% and leave a heavy metal church business card and leave. Okay? So, we're getting there. Ha <laughs> Yes! I always worry about you guys. So, yes. The end. Here we go. Do not let, here, 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 this whole scripture, this whole thing in Ephesians we're sitting here talking about and dissecting, here's the one sentence that they throw at us. Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. Well, heck, they got it wrong. All they're saying is do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. The only unwholesome talk I hear is the judgment, slander, and gossip that's coming out of your pie hole against us. And they just stop right there. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs that it may benefit those who listen. So unwholesome talk is don't be a dick on the t-shirt, but yet the lost person that comes up and laughs and wants to buy it and ends up giving their heart to Jesus right there at one of these events. Do, do you see the problem I have with people's people that are telling me that and their denomination didn't come around until between 1600 and 1900 and something? See what I'm saying? And do not grieve the Holy Spirit with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Here, check. How many Christians do you know outside? Well, there's some of you in here like this. I'm not saying we're perfect. We're far from it, but we're honest. How many Christians do you know that goes to another church that break these? Get rid of all bitterness, all rage and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of, every form of malice, every form of malice, okay? Not one specific, but all forms of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another. All those Christians that screw over the waitresses on Sunday, yeah, they're following that. <laughs> Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave. Just as in Christ God forgave. Every church in the world has a gossip and slander issue. Every, I know Christians that are mean. I know Christians that, I know atheists that are, one of my best friends is an agnostic. I've told you that before. And she's going to hell right now. And she is nicer, more giving, loving, gives of herself, of her time, is dedicated to children, gives her money, and she's going to hell. But yet, you, you see my point on that? Every church is guilty. And then this is, oh, last but not least, um, you know, I'm just gonna, never mind, I don't even have to read this. It's the one saying, I became this to save a few, became this, became this, became this. The secret to heavy metal church is we're going out to every walk of life and loving them to Christ. Um, that's it. Last. Oh, look at this. We're on the last page. We. I get to go jet skiing. 
So, you know, the people, these Christians out there, oh, well, I'm going to try not to cuss. I, I don't cuss anymore. I read my Bible. I went to church. I don't smoke, drink, so I must be a better Christian than Brian because he smokes, drinks, cusses, and I'm not tooting my horn. But seriously, for these Christians that are thinking they're a better Christian than me and you, okay, how many salvation prayers have you said with somebody in the past year? None. You know what I'm saying? It's just like you want to throw shots like that. I think God's okay with our T-shirts, you know? And did you say that's pride? That ain't pride in me. Oh, okay, thank you. You said that right at the moment that I said how many, because again, I just, I'm sorry, Jimmy, I misunderstood you. But the thing is, I give God all the credit for this place, all the credit, but it's okay if you think, well, I don't smoke anymore and I don't cuss anymore. And smoking, it doesn't say anywhere in the Bible, smoking's a sin. It just says your, your body is a temple, but most of America is fat. I could lose another 20, you know what I'm saying? And I, I, I'm just saying that you're going to tell me my temple, I'm smoking that cigar and I'm hurting my lip right there. But, you know, if it's a temple and you're eating Big Macs three times a week with no exercise, America is the most out of shape nation in the entire world. But yet we're supposed to be the Christian nation. Other countries laugh at us, you know. But if you're basing your Christianity because you don't, I'm just a, I'm a, oof, yes, Lord. I'm not cussing. I read my Bible every day, and I, I go to church three times a week, and Brian's got a shirt. His, oh, the foul Chris, he wore a shirt that said, don't be a dumbass. He's talking about Balaam's donkey, who was a smart ass. And if he had been a dumbass, Balaam would have got killed four times, different times. Well, only once, but four different times. Or, yeah, you see what I mean? And you could use that to lead somebody to Jesus. But hey, this Christian down here, he don't cuss. He won't step foot in a bar and throw darts with a lost person and because, you know, that's, that's the place of the devil. Are you feeling me today? Come on up here, praise team. Listen, I keep hearing this big revival's coming. I've heard it for 10 years. There ain't no revival coming to America until something so bad happens to America that all these denominations are going to drop their stupid differences and come together as one body, then the revival will happen, but only then. Um, da, 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 da. Oh, and that's it. Did I talk about last week uh, at church about how Paul with uh, why do I keep doing what I know I shouldn't do, that it had to have been some kind of sexual hang-up or sexual sin because... Out of all the sins we commit, it's only when I mess up sexually, sexual immorality, something like that, that I really feel like a douchebag. Like I really, my heart's bright. God, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, man. You know, I don't, we all white lie every now and then. We all, but you know, and oh man, I shouldn't have said that. God, I'm really sorry. And then you just go on about your day. It just seems like sexual sin is the one that you beat yourself to death over. You know, you're like, oh, I'm just such a, so that was it. I said that on last week's. Other than that, we're going to make it easy. Let's go ahead and get the lights up, please. We're going to do it different. I just want to look at you. Salvation is so easy. It is so, so, so easy, guys. You don't have to change anything about yourself today. Thing is, don't try in your own power either. Tomorrow, after you get saved, just seek God, and he's going to clean you up along the way. You don't have to wait, please. That's another big lie of the devil is, yeah, well, I got to do this. I got to stop doing this. I got to change this. I got to, it ain't that way. God wants you exactly the way you are right now at this very moment. I promise, okay? If you'll bow your heads and close your eyes, we're going to say a prayer right now together. We're not going to try to embarrass you. We're not going to, we're not going to bring you up front. We're not going to have you raise your hand. We're going to say a prayer together. And if you want Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you want your name written in the Lamb's Book of Life to spend eternity with Jesus and the misfits in this room, and do you believe that Jesus walked this earth? Do you believe that Jesus 
was crucified, murdered on a cross for your sins? Do you believe that God raised him from the dead three days later? And do you believe that he's coming back again? If the answer is yes to all of that, but you have never said a salvation prayer, I beg of you to say it right now because you believe everything that you need to believe to be saved. Don't let nothing stop you. Life is but a vapor, folks. And if Satan can just keep distracting you another day, another week, another, yeah, but I'm addicted to this. I don't care. Neither does God. He will clean you up along the way, but you have to get your name in the Lamb's book of life. And maybe you just chasing your tail in the desert. You got saved a while back, years ago. And now you're just, you're not living. Oh man, I'm just, God is so mad at me. I'm just the exact opposite of where I need to be or where I was or who I was 10 years ago. God's not mad at you. He just wants you to honor him, say you're sorry and keep rocking on. If you truly got saved 10 years ago, you're saved now. You're just not where you need to be. You're, you're in the thorn bushes, man. And God just wants you to, wants to pick you up and love you and pick up where you left off. We're going to say a prayer right now. If any two of those scenarios are you, and if you're watching or listening from home, say this prayer with us right now. And if you mean it in your heart, you are saved. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I confess now that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe with all of my heart that God raised him from the dead. Father, please forgive me for all of my sins. Please cover them with the blood of Jesus. Please guide my steps from this day forward. And please use me as you wish. I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. And real quick on Facebook, I forgot to say hello to FHMCC Winnipeg, Canada. Uh, we have a new one, Edmond, Oklahoma, that just fired up this last week. We have Bellevue, Washington, and we have Flower Mound, Texas. We salute you. Other than that, if you said that prayer for the very first time, you're going to heaven, my friend. You are in the Lamb's Book of Life. It doesn't mean you're going to be perfect. If you walked in a douchebag, you're going to leave a douchebag, but I promise you, God's going to clean you up along the way. We'll see you next Sunday. Bring somebody to the family reunion. Now get out of here so I can go jet ski. And after they melt your face one more time, go for it. Thanks for worshiping with us today, folks. It's good seeing everybody. Here's a little song about Jesus love you. loves me this I know oh the Bible tells me so little ones they belong he is weak but he is so strong he loves him He loves me Hey, he loves me Hey, he loves me Hey, he loves you too <laughs> Have a good day, baby Thank you, Pastor Brian Listen to me Jesus loves me, he who died. Heaven's gates, they open wide. He'll wash away your every sin. Open up your heart and let him come in. He loves you. He loves you. Hey, he loves you.
Thanks for having us. <laughs> Woo! Hey! Wonderful day.